Alright, Fishaholic fam, well, welcome back to another episode of Welcome to the Channel. My name is Rich and we are walking through a trail right now to get uh, to the ocean. And uh, we're going to try and just do some surf fishing for uh, the rest of the day today. It's uh, a little after 1.30 and uh, we're going to hit this first spot uh, on the ocean side, like I said. And uh, high tide is at around like 4 p.m. over here, so probably once it... Uh, goes uh, high and slack probably head out of here and go to another spot and catch like the very end of the incoming because uh, all over Montauk every spot has a different time of the tide so uh, then once we hit that spot then possibly if uh, there's more daylight left in the day then uh, we'll go to another spot to fish uh, the beginning of the outgoing tide into dark and hopefully, in the end, that'll be enough to get on uh, a little bite today. So, we probably got uh, now like a 10, 15 minute walk till we get to the water, and uh, then we're gonna start fishing. So, I'll see you guys there. Well, we made it to our first spot here and uh, the water looks super juicy and I think that there's got to be at least some schooly bass swimming along the surf zone uh, looking for something to eat so I'm gonna try this first spot for maybe like 15 20 minutes and if we catch something we'll stay a little bit longer but if not then I'll uh, keep moving down until we uh, get on a bite Oh, we just had a follow. I saw a fish uh, swimming through that wave, chasing uh, the shad. And I did have a little piece of weed on there that fell off when I was reeling it in, I saw. So maybe that's why he didn't hit it. But I saw him swim that way to the left. So maybe we can get him this time. There's one. Fish on! Pretty decent schooly sized fish. <clears throat> nice chunky one. Got him hooked twice. <laughs> So uh, I'm not really expecting to run into any big fish today. You know, we might get something smaller than like what we just caught or if we're lucky, something like 28, 30 inches. And that's why I'm fishing with uh, this light surf rod. This is uh, an eight foot prototype dark matter John Skinner surf rod. And with this rod, we should have a lot of fun with uh, any fish that we hook into. And uh, kind of reminds me of when I was a kid, when I was like eight to like 12 fishing along this area. And uh, I fished with a very similar type setup, and, and this is a number five visser. And uh, it was so cool back in the day because any of the big boulders out here always had fish, like schooly size up to 20 pounds. And uh, it didn't matter, you know, uh, time of day either. You come out here midday, like right now, and uh, all that really mattered was the tide, and you know, you'd always catch fish. All right, well, uh, it's pretty slow here now. I'm gonna move down a little bit, see if we can find some better action.
All right, so I made a little switch to this uh, little dark matter mini pencil popper. And um, sometimes, midday, you can work a popper real tight along these rocks when um, the tide is close to high tide, like we're an, an hour uh, till high tide. And uh, stripers will just cruise up and down though, and uh, you can get them to eat uh, a surface lure. So I'm gonna try making like short little casts just to, you know, right along this structure and see if we can get uh, a fish to blow up on our uh, little mini pencil. All right, making a switch to this Yozuri top knock. There's a bite. There he is. Fish on the Yozuri. Look at that, the wave brought him right to me. All right, well, let's get back out there. It uh, took us about 30 minutes of uh, fishing this uh, Yozuri to get uh, our first bite, finally. Oh, just had another bite. Right in the same spot. Cool. Oh, another bite. Real small fish. But uh, it seems like there's a good amount of them here. Let's uh, switch back to the little dark matter pencil popper. It might be easier for them to eat that little bait. Oh, there he is. That one crushed it at the top of the wave right before it broke, that was cool. I paused it on purpose so it would kind of float over and that's when he hit it. Oh, he fell off right there. All right, well, pretty cool to get a couple more here, but uh, we fished for like another 20 minutes and no other bites. So uh, I think we're gonna move down to uh, one or two other spots and uh, probably just give it like another hour here in this uh, general area. And then uh, we'll probably head back to the car and uh, drive to the other side of the island and uh, try another spot uh, over there. All right, that looks good right there. It's gotta be at least one fish right here. And I see a couple cormorants, so they're probably here feeding on some kind of bait. Uh, there's a fish. There we go. get another. All 
All right, well, we're kind of in the same spot where we got the first one now. So pretty much all the way back. I'm just gonna take a couple more casts here with the shed and see if we can pull out one or two more and then we're gonna leave and go to another spot. Oh, there was a bite immediately as soon as it hit the water. Looks like uh, it was probably a bass. I don't see any teeth marks. And also right now it's pretty much high tide. So this water is as high as it's gonna get right now. So hopefully, uh, you know, there's some more fish that got pushed up after we left the spot. There's one. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. One more for the board. Well, I got a big update for you. And uh, after we caught and released that uh, last little schoolie over on the south side, uh, we took like three dozen more casts in that same spot and didn't have any other bites. So uh, I figured we'd pack it up from there because I was kind of looking for a change of pace. And I was also extremely dehydrated, didn't bring water. I should have brought water because I did a lot of steps today. But uh, we went back to the car, grabbed some water, and then uh, we drove over here to the back bay. And uh, the, the conditions are perfect and it's been beautiful, but uh, we walked like um, probably about a mile uh, west of where we are now uh, to a spot that's usually always really productive. It's like a point with uh, you know some really big rocks on it. And you know in some of my past videos, you've probably seen me fish there. Uh, and we walked basically like all the way there, but like maybe 30 yards before we got there, uh, out of the woodwork uh, came like two spear fishermen and they jumped right in the water, right on those rocks. And uh, that kind of uh, was a bummer to see because I was like, uh, great, I just did all this walking and, and now I, you know, I, I can't really like, you know, effectively fish that area. Uh, and I did fish some boulders nearby, but uh, unfortunately I didn't have any bites. So I walked basically all the way back and then I just took a few casts around these rocks here. And, and I have caught fish here, but um, you know, it's usually not like that great of a spot or not as great as the spot that we originally walked to to fish. But uh, maybe we'll hit that another day and I'm gonna get out of here and go grab some dinner and uh, maybe a nap. And then uh, I'm actually getting out on my buddy Dan's boat, the Sea Bear, uh, his 39 contender, which uh, you may have seen me tuna fish on in some of my past videos. But uh, we're not going out tuna fishing. We're gonna go out just for some uh, nighttime big bass with eels and plugs. And uh, I'm gonna try and film some of that. Uh, but uh, we may also uh, just fish uh, until uh, first light and also throw some top water for uh, hopefully some big bass and blues. So uh, I'll definitely try and film that if we do end up doing that. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll put all my tackle and equipment down in the description below. 
And uh, if you like this video, be sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for more. And until the next video, live to fish, fish to live. There's one. Oh, oh. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> All right, check that out. There he is. Oh yeah. Woo. Oh yes, another big one. <laughs>